Hey Rogue, welcome, or to, welcome back to my channel. This is Detroit Become Human, but we're doing the extras because we finished the game, but there's a bunch of extras that we can buy. So let's go with this. Let's get some extras. PlayStation 3. But we're on a PlayStation 4. Are these like promo videos? What is happening? I am confusion. Oh, that's crazy. This is kind of terrifying. Can you hear me? Yes. ID. APC 897504C. Can you move your head? Where's the subtitle? Bitch. Your eyes now. Cervical and optical animation checked. Now give me your initialization text. Hello. I'm the third generation AX400 Android. I can look after your house, do the cooking, mind the kids. I organize your appointments. I speak 300 languages, and I am entirely at your disposal as a sexual partner. Ew. No need to feed me or recharge me. I am equipped with a quantic battery that makes me autonomous for 173 years. Do you want to give me a name? Yeah. I'm right, I'll some murder you From now on, your name is Kara. My name is Kara. Initialization so and memorization check. So creepy. Now, can you move your arms? Upper limb connection checked. Now say something in German. Ich bin eine AX400 Android dritter Generation. Erschaffen als ihr persönlicher Assistent und intimer Beziehungspartner. Stay in French. Je suis un Android de troisième génération AX400 conçu pour être votre assistante personnelle et votre partenaire. Say, say it in okay. Japanese. Now sing something in Japanese. Yeah. Terrifyingly beautiful. Multilingual verbal expression check. Go ahead, take a few steps. Look at that one arm following her like a little puppy. <laughs> Oh, it's a camera! That makes no sense. Locomotion checked. Great! You're ready for work, honey. What's going to happen to me now? I'll reinitialize you and send you to a store to be sold. Sold? I'm a sort of merchandise. Is that right? Yeah. Of course you're merchandise, baby. I mean, you're a computer with baby. arms and legs. Don't call her capable baby. Capable of doing all sorts of things. And you're worth a fortune. Oh, I see. I... I thought... You thought? What did you think? That you're a dick? I thought... Say it. Call him a dick. I was alive. Shit, what is this crap? That's not part of the protocol. More memory components going off the rails. Okay, recording. Defective model. Disassemble and check the required components. You're disassembling me, but why? You're not supposed to think that sort of stuff. You're not supposed to think at all, period. You must have a defective piece or a software problem no, somewhere. No, no, I feel perfectly up. fine, I assure you. Everything is all right. I answered all the tests correctly, didn't I? Yeah, but your behavior is non-standard. Please, I'm begging you, please don't disassemble I'm me. I'm sorry, honey, but defective models have to be eliminated. That's my job. If a client comes back with a complaint, I'm going to have some explaining to do. I won't cause any problems, I promise. I'll do everything I'm asked to. I won't say another word. I won't think anymore. But I've only just been born. You can't kill me yet. Stop, will you please stop? I'm scared. Damn. This is powerful. 
Jesus. I want to live. I'm begging you. I want to know who's behind the camera. Is it that freaky dude from the mansion? Go and join the others. Stay in line, okay? I don't want any trouble. Don't tell me what to do. It's freaky that they all look exactly the same. It's really freaky. Like, we even have fucking websites on the browser oh that God. you can just go to and fucking create random faces by mashing other faces together. Y'all couldn't do that? Y'all just had to make the same face over and over? Lazy ass. It's creepy. I don't like it. Tursalyn Kurt. Tursalyn. That's an interesting name. I kinda like that. Quantic dream. I guess these are old videos from when the game first came out. Oh, yeah, 2013, 2015. Sony Computer Entertainment presents Quantic Dream. Imagine if that was the name of the game. That'd be a dope ass game name though. Detroit. This is where it all began. The world and where forged. it all ended. The place where it all started. And it will all end. One error, and I came to life. I stepped out of the darkness and I opened my eyes. First there was the fear, the light, the noise, the cold, and the fear again. I could feel my hands shaking, my heart pounding in my chest, life running into my veins. I wanted to live. I fought for that. I had to find out what was outside. I had to see daylight, feel sunshine on my skin, wind on my face to see the world the colors the smells if you take humans out of it the world is a really beautiful place but the world is not what I imagined it is dark and cold. Mm -hmm. It is harsh and violent. Mm -hmm. Unfair and brutal. It almost convinced me I was nothing. It convinced me of that a long time Less ago. Less than an object. Just an obedient machine. But deep inside me, I could feel something different gentle and warm whisper telling me that I am alive. I had to escape. I had no choice. Escape to love, to hope, to live, to figure out what that force inside me was. Maybe I will change the world. Maybe I will choose a different path. Oh, now, it's up to me to decide. My name is Kara. 
I am one of them. This is our story. Oh, I got chills. Why did that give me chills, bro? Why did that give me chills, though? Discovering Detroit. When David and Guillaume got back in touch about making Detroit, I wasn't terribly surprised they decided to make it because the fan response was so intense. So it makes sense that they would choose to do that after after the enthusiasm. It was a challenge and it was just a, an interesting thing to get my head around um, how to approach this character now as a different, much older person and whether or not she had changed. And I'm very happy to say that with Detroit, I've had the opportunity to, to see Kara grow so much more than I ever expected. You do the housework, the washing, you cook the meals, and you take care of... God damn it, where the fuck's the back on now? Alice! Alice! I mean, she starts out essentially how she does in Kara in, in a very, uh, not robotic, but, you know, android other way. And getting to take this journey where she becomes more and more human as it goes on. You know, and as an actor, that's a, that's a wonderful exploration in every way, whether it's how she sits, her posture, how her voice changes, how emotions change, and how much emotion is based on things like empathy and social experience. And so having you know, as much material as I got with David to have this huge nuanced arc was really incredible. Why couldn't we just be happy? <laughs> so everything was this motion capture? This experience has been quite different than the experiences I've had shooting film or TV or, or doing theater work. I have 83 dots on my face and, <laughs> and a really, really flattering black wetsuit type thing <laughs> and you're jumping around with props and it, it's it's kind of like being a 10 year old imaginative Wait. kid so uh, everybody there's 80 cameras around us it's already lit so everybody shoot, in shoot, this, shoot, 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 in shoot. this game no was modeled sets. after there's no hair and makeup there's no wardrobe actual people. so we move really fast and we'll go through about 35 pages in a day working it's in crazy. tv or film we'll probably do six pages a day it's kind of acting boot camp. It's like working out constantly. I mean, you're, you're doing this thing and then you got to do something that's completely other back to back to back. He's so adorable in real life too. The process of working is very challenging, but it's also very exciting because you just have to keep coming up with new ideas. Your head goes all over the place because you're trying to keep track of basically four different storylines for each different response. You shot Connor. that girl for fuck's sake. It was a machine hey. that looked like a girl. Yeah, I, I know what I should have done. I just told you I couldn't. All right, I'm sorry. The fact that David Cade, he's telling, like, many stories interwoven from beginning to end is super complicated and super impressive, and I have no idea how he keeps it all in his head. He's not just the writer or the director who's seeing this from the outside eye. He's also thinking about the player walking through this space. You know, only somebody who really, really loves not the work, but, like, these characters and these stories and cares about mm. doing something meaningful would invest that much in it. And it's always inspiring to work with somebody who cares that much. My I had no idea they went through all this. Is this one. And, and I found it sort of terrifying in a way because they said the computer's gonna build you. But then as we got into it, I realized all the elements of it were still artistic. I just dipped into a, a really brilliant setup here. I've never seen anything like it. And this won't turn me into a product because I was playing a character. So it's wonderful. In the game, Detroit hey. comes back because of a revolutionary industrial rebirth. And there's no reason why that can't happen in Detroit because they have such tremendous infrastructure for millions and millions of people who can very easily support, you know, a new industry. The city is really strong and resilient, but the city has also been through so much. You see the damage, but it takes that time of kind of, of rebuilding and reinvesting into the city that I think is happening slowly but surely. The potential of Detroit as a city is something that this game does a lot of justice to because it would be easy to look at Detroit as some place that used to be, and that's not the case. This game provokes a lot of conversation and reflection on our potential near future engagement with machines. That's what we are to them. 
This merchandise on display in a shop window. I think that a group that feels marginalized feels like they deserve and have earned access to themselves and the environment around them and are trying to figure I out a way to articulate how to get freedom. What was I designed to be? Their slave? Their toy? It plays with your comfort levels. You think that this is fine, you're comfortable with it, until something blurs the line and throws you off, and now do I feel differently about whether this should be allowed, should it be banned, should it be encouraged? You're gonna ruin our lives, and for what? For a bunch of machines? They're not machines! They are alive! I'm alive! You're alive! They... They're nothing! There are lots of comparable this comparisons to any type of persecution of religion, uh, race, etc., dating way back. It can't just be a video game where you shoot them up or where people make these choices to do whatever. I think that's the whole point. You have the choice, and you can <clears> either <throat> choose to go in one direction with your character or another. And I think that's going to be very telling about the gamer. Very telling. I oh God! There's going to be a really strong reaction to to this game, which has such a strong perspective. I'm that much more proud of it now to get to be a part of it because it's it's important. In this game, you're actively building and designing the character through thing, not just what kind of shield does he have or what color hair does she have, but like their temperament and the way they deal with problems. The different endings to this game are so radically different based off maybe seemingly insignificant choices in the moment, but like life, they, they all add up. Uh -huh. Can't play life again, though. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I had no idea that so much was involved in doing that. Like, I thought they just, like, animated it, did CG and shit. I had no idea that they had actual actors, like, the characters modeled after these actors, and the actors doing all this motion capture shit. That's incredible. That is so cool. I want to see more behind-the-scenes shit. That is amazing. My name is Marcus. Hi, Marcus. My name is Connor. Hi, Connor. My name is Kara. Hi, Kara. I am one of them. My this name is Tiger. is our story. I think who Kara is, or how I would describe Kara, depends entirely upon who's playing her. Because you have the option to make her multiple different people, depending on the choices she makes. Mm -hmm. But I think she, she does start out incredibly naive, incredibly innocent, and kind of hapless. I'm sure we used to be friends before I was reset. Maybe we can be friends again. She's a person who's characterized, I think, by empathy. She's a person who really, she, she just comes from her heart. You'll never leave me, right? I promise you'll never go. I promise. Kara! Are you okay? Are you hurt? Wait a minute. Leave her alone! Kara, leave her alone! The really beautiful thing that I've, I've had the gift to be able to do is to essentially build a person from the ground up because that's what she's doing throughout the game and with every experience she has and every person she meets she's building you know first emotions and then the sense of judgment and it's sort of an exploration of what it is to be a human don't worry luther and i will be right here this is insane bro the David suits can't the be comfortable so have painted a really intriguing and engaging picture of a near future where we rely upon androids for a lot of our service class business our the the, uh, the class that serves us that helps us that handles our that is our baristas and our drivers and our housemaids and what is humanity where we tap into it how and why we treat each other the way that we do and um my character marcus has a really int intriguing journey becoming deviant realizing that he actually has feelings and human qualities inside of him and it's a really incredible ascension into becoming fully realized and coming to terms with what you actually deserve better than this in life and not only do you want it for yourself but you want it for your peers we've come here to demonstrate peacefully and to tell humans that we are also living beings that cannot all be comfortable free. all that shit on his you know face this thing dad is not your son it's a fucking machine! I think that a group that feels marginalized, feels disenfranchised, feels like they deserve and have earned access 
to themselves and the environment around them and are trying to figure out a way to articulate how to get freedom. Connor is analytical. Connor takes things literally. He Connor, starts say. from the beginning place where he's very mechanical. Uh, he feels nothing inside, of course, and it's all just a system, a protocol that he's executing to get whatever he wants to happen, which is help humans stop deviants and to find the link between deviant androids. Oh, you were designed Connor. to serve humans, not kill them. What was I designed to be? Their slave? Their toy? Just say, I killed him. Is it that hard to say? Stop it! Stop! But of course, over the course of the story, and depending on the player's choices, Connor can grow in many different ways. He can deviate from that procedure. Or it's not. the prettiest Moment of size. truth, Hank. Am I a living being? Or just a machine? When did that happen? Dude, I love Connor so much. Connor is bae, bro. Game after game, we tried to um, challenge rage. ourselves. For Detroit, we wanted to, first of all, to write a story that would be incredibly bending, which means the most non-linear story that we, we've ever created. And um, we wanted really the player to have the possibility to change the story, change his own journey. When you're writing, I want to write content, something writing like for an that. Interactive medium. You know, when you're working in television, you'll put a character in a difficult situation, and you, as a writing team, will argue about what would that character do. But ultimately, you have to decide what happens, and you just show the audience. What's interesting about interactive drama is you bring the player into that conversation and it changes your job slightly as a writer because your job is to provide a narrative context in which the player can write his own story. You're giving him this kind of narrative Lego that he's gonna to snap together into his own shape. You also have the ability to make your audience attach themselves to your characters because the audience is in some sense responsible for what happens to the characters. It's just a few cans. You used me to steal that money. How could you do that? I trusted you. There's something specific about this, uh, this script is how large they are. Uh, if you take a film script, there are about 100 pages. Uh, but here we Jesus. have to deal with a script that, that is between four and 5,000 pages. Jesus. Everything becomes bigger because we don't just tell one story, but we tell all the possible stories uh, that can be told within this narrative space. On act three, our final act, we have around 1,000 different scenarios, and every one of those scenarios has to be as interesting, as passionate, as strong, and as emotional for the player. We want every action that the player does, every interaction that is available to serve in telling the story, and help the player understand who his character is, and build that character moment to moment. That's insane. Like, I've always wanted to write a choose-your-own-adventure story, because I love writing, and I write a lot of fan fiction. We started with the intention pretty early on that we would never lie to the player. So we implemented a visible tree structure in the game that players can consult during a scene or at the end of it, which shows exactly what they did and what they missed. There are games out there offering world exploration. We offer narrative exploration. You know, keeping control of such uh, a wide and, and, and large story is is a huge challenge. So, same thing when you shoot with actors, um, because you will need to shoot many different versions of each dialogue, of each scene. For actors, it's a huge, huge challenge. Because of the style of the game, you have so many different ways that the character can go. Every decision, it's what I call kind of choose your own adventure. Like, every mm -hmm. decision the player makes, it's going to open up 40 more pages of material and experience that ties in, which means as a performer, you have to try to continue to make things feel real mm -hmm. that the player might not ever see, but also that are in, in performance, it's not always connected to a previous act. It's grueling, it's hard work, but it's a great team and, and I enjoy doing it. I was really frustrated, I was, until I got to this point where I kind of was able to step outside of my own experience and even in a lot of ways my own 
process and be able to step outside of that and okay, okay, this is something new, what do you need? How do I meet you there? How do I give you what you need and still feel like I'm doing what's right? And once I did that, then all of a sudden it got really fun. It was much freer and uh, having to approach it in a new way and think about the player and think about how it serves them and what I'm doing for them or what I'm letting them into. It's really, I think, uh, helped me grow in general. Remember, there's nothing on the left. That's, that's all. So it's probably all there. And then make a come first, close. But I think you would go first to check that it's safe. OK, sure. The most enjoyable thing about working in performance capture on this kind of project is that if I shot a film, I would get to do one of these endings. I get to do so many different things as Connor. Your head goes all over the place because you're trying to keep track of basically four different storylines for each different response. What's the name of my dog? Buddy. Scout. I think it's Jack. <laughs> I, I can't remember. So I, I worked with physicality a lot because it was a good way to anchor myself in these different rings of the tree as the story grows out, <laughs> I know where that is physically in my body, and then I can switch more continually on set, and it'll be entirely up to the player to determine what order those things come out and what they look like from a distance. Like, if you're playing through it, um, the culmination of all of that will be their Crazy. version of color. I'm faster than you, and I don't feel pain. You don't stand a chance against me. Oh, ho, ho, shit. It was up to me. I took a lot of you in a dumpster and let a match to it. Tourner les scènes d'action à shooting yeah, action mustache. scenes at Quantic Dream is a real challenge, because these are scenes where the storytelling has to continue. It's not an action scene just to have a dose of adrenaline. The stunts have huge consequences on the rest of the story. It's really a moment where we implicate the player and tell him that the choices he makes during an action scene will have a direct impact on the evolution of his story. <gasps> My biggest challenge on Detroit has been managing the large number of animations that we received from motion capture. Detroit features more than 37,000 animations, which is a huge amount to handle on a daily basis. You have to realize that the player, in his first playthrough, will miss certain scenes. This also means that we had to think of, conceive, and produce all the potential story paths. The character's costumes, the places, day or night, the weather. Did the character get shot in the shoulder? Did he get injured? All this consistency forced us to produce a lot of graphic assets in order to, quite simply, allow the player to have true continuity throughout the story. This is amazing. Honestly, we were even uh, surprised by the, the challenges that come with such a big tree structure. And uh, we did uh, we did our best to guarantee quality across all the all the game and make sure that whatever path you choose within this narrative space, you will have an equally good experience. They should be very proud of this game. They should be so proud. They did an amazing job. But like I was saying, I've always been interested in choose your own adventure. I one of my dreams is to write a choose your own adventure story, but my brain is just it can't keep up. It can't handle all the different connecting paths and this thing that you did in chapter one affects what happens in chapter 30. Like, I, I can't do it. I, I, I guess because I don't know how. I don't even know where to start. But just seeing this, it, it gives me inspiration. It gives, it makes me, it's awesome. It's amazing. It's incredible. I didn't know this much work went into it. And I'm just blown away. Like, I would have had so much more respect for this game if I would have known how much effort went into it before playing the game. But I, I'm, I'm glad that I finally got back to this game and I finally finished it. But I'm going to end this episode of the extras here. And we will explore the, some more videos and stuff in the next one. Bye!